I thought I would remind you today that so far I have posted about 145 videos on YouTube. Now to me, that's a lot of videos. That's a lot of subject matter. And I never dreamed when I started this that I would get that far. So from time to time, I spend my time thinking about what can I talk about next. I don't want to stick to one subject too long. I want to go back and forth, which is what I've done and I've just about lost track of the stories I've already told. Some are just stories, some are just chit chat. And that seems to be what some of you want is chit chat. Well, I'm going to talk about me. I'm going to go back like 50 years, 50 years. I Sometimes I don't feel like I'm over 50 years old. And old age is ahead of me. But I have to face the fact that I am not a senior citizen. I'm one of the elderly. But I'm going along pretty good and I I'm going I'm hoping you'll stick with me while I tell another story. Fifty years ago, my kids were in high school. They were in and out of the house day and night. And I was there by myself. <clears throat> Not much to do in my spare time. Of course I had a job, but at night there wasn't much entertainment. So I've been a project person my whole life. I have done worked with arts and crafts, a little bit of everything except ceramics and leather. Never did try anything like that. I've done a lot of decorations, decorations that you can sell, those that you can use year round and those that are for holiday. Love working on holiday decorations. I've done a lot of things. And this I will say, whatever I do has to be my, my thing. Not something I saw and copied from somebody else. Now, of course, we always, all of us, get our ideas from other people but I don't copy what they do. Anything I make, I usually make one, only one. I make things that are similar, but not exactly the same. For instance, take a look at my necklace. I was making jewelry eight or 10 years ago. And this is one of the necklaces I want you to be able to see. This is, these are glass beads, beautiful glass beads. These have a pair of earrings that go with them. Where those earrings are, well, they're around somewhere. Now the earrings I'm wearing came out of a junk jewelry box. I started flipping through this old costume jewelry and I ended up with Three pairs of turquoise. I wear a lot of turquoise. Oh, these I'll keep. Yeah, they're kind of cute. And I really like anything made with these stones. See, see how they look in, that one looks in back. So I really like these and I discovered I had a few tops to go with them. So anyway, this is junk jewelry. This is my jewelry. So I just thought you might like to see a little bit of my work. Here's another one. 
made with the same glass beads, only they're smaller. See what they look like. I like the mixture of the metal and the glass beads. I haven't worn this one either. Got a lot of jewelry I have never worn because I sold quite a bit and then I got tired of making jewelry. So there went that project. Now here I am, 87 years old. What am I gonna do now? Who wants these things I make now? Life has changed so much. People don't want my handmade stuff. Their style of decorating is different. So, what do I do now? I'm reminded of Grandma Moses. How many of you remember Grandma Moses? I'd say if you're under 60 years of age, you don't even know who she was. I'm going to tell you. Grandma Moses' name was Anna Mary. Her husband had died. She was 77 years old. What was she going to do? She had to find something to do. Now, she had been raised in farm country, lots of big farms. So she was familiar with farm animals and the habits of the people and the animals. So she decided she would try painting. And she didn't have the good canvases and, and uh, kind of art paper then because they didn't make that sort of thing and she didn't have the money to buy the materials. So she started painting and she would paint barns and farms, cows, horses, pigs, chickens. There was always a dog in the scene and there were people but those people didn't have detailed features. They were just what you call folk art, what I call folk art. And according to a description given to Grandma Moses, she painted quest intentionally American. Now, quest intentionally is a long word, and I had to say it a few times before I could even pronounce it. But that's what her work was called. She w would go to county fairs and, you know, the festivals and things. They had them back then, just like they do now. She was going from the 19th century into the 20th century. So one day, she was at the fair. She was selling her special pickles, jars of pickles. But while she was there, she took her paintings with her. And they were all hung inside a drugstore, a pharmacy. She had them all hanging inside while she sat outside selling her pickles. A man came along. He took a look at all of those paintings. And when I say primitive, I mean you don't see the features of the, the bodies, like the little Amish hats, the long sleeved shirts, and the ladies with their aprons and you picture a farm scene, you know what I'm describing. I don't have to tell you all of that. So this man looked at those paintings and he bought them all. He took them back to his art museum and hung them all inside his museum. From there, 
I'm trying to remember the, the uh, process. Grandma Moses became very popular. By then she was about 80 years old. She was selling her painting. The man at the museum was selling her painting. She ended up in the Smithsonian Institute. Institution. You can find her painting there. You can even buy Grandma Mo's pain, Moses' painting at Sotheby's. Now, if you can afford it, her talents, her work became well known. In fact, my sister had about a 12 or 15 picture hanging on her wall. Now, it wasn't a painting. It was a piece of fabric. They had taken her painting and reproduced, reproduced the designs on fabric. So my sister took that piece of fabric and framed it with glass over it. You would never know but what it, either a print or an original, no way you would know that. Um, I'm trying to think where else she was doing her paintings. But she became famous and she began her artwork at the age of 77. I wanted to point that out to you because I remember Grandma Moses very well. In fact, I liked her artwork because at the time I liked country style. And I don't know what my sister ever did with the picture that she had. Probably went to a Goodwill. So I'm telling you this story because it kind of describes me except for the fame and fortune. But I'm happy enough that I can look out the window and I see something new in my future. I'm not ready to give up yet. I want to do things. I want something to be noted for. And I think, I think this is it. At the age of 87, I'm telling stories on the YouTube channel. There have been a million people who have viewed my channel. I never dreamed something like that would happen. This was just a little craft project. That's all it was going to be. Something to keep Granny Pat happy. You know, you got to keep Grandma happy. I hadn't counted on anybody in the past to do that, I figured it was up to me to create my own happiness. Now there are all kinds of happiness. So I've settled for the simple life, things I like to do. I went to, I'm going to go back to when my kids were teenagers staying at home. This was the part I left out. I wanted to learn to paint. One of Jan's high school friends would come by the house. She wasn't there. He sat and talked to me, and he was an artist. He was a fantastic young artist and so interesting, and he would watch me doing watercolor. That's what I wanted to do. And he would compliment my work. What more could I ask for? A young teenager, 17 years old, complimenting my simple 
artwork. I decided I'm going to take an art class at the university. This was an art class. So I signed up for it. And I knew, oh, this is going to be a challenge. I walked into that room, and it was full of people. And I was observing them. They all had their art brushes and their paints and whatever they had been told to bring. And they were sort of practicing on their canvases. And I'm looking and saying, oh, my gosh, she knows how to draw. I don't even know how to draw. If I draw a state straight line, it comes out wiggly. So I met her. I'd better plan on a wiggly picture. So I was a little embarrassed at first because I said, no, I don't fit in this class. These people are artists. I'm not. I'm just somebody that wants to be an artist. Okay, the instructor comes into the classroom. He has a foreign accent. The man is from Russia. He still has the strong accent. He got his training from the best of the best of Russian artists. Oh goodness, what have I set myself up for? I've got to be able to do something. <laughs> so the first thing he did he took a little bud vase and he set it up. Set it up like I'm going to do my little glass of juice. And he stuck a little, what looked like a little weed, down in that little bud vase. It wasn't yet springtime, so we didn't have any blossoms. So he just picked a weed and stuck it in the bud vase. And he turned it one direction. He says, now, you see this? I want you to paint that. Well, he's doing the same thing. So he's using sepia art color. Everybody else painting sepia. I've always been one of those. I don't want my work to look like everybody else's. And I just raised my hand. I said, do we have to paint with the sepia color tones. He said, no, you can use any color you want. So I reached for the blue. My painting was gonna be in blue. Did the first side now. He waited a few minutes. He says, now, paint this side of the flower. It's a little blossom. And we painted. And then he turned it again a third way. So you're seeing three sides of one stem and each is different. So you're going from here to here to here on your canvas, just painting a weed. Mine was the only blue one in the class. Okay, we move along. He wants us to paint in oils. Oh gosh, I don't think I can do that. All right, don't be thinking of anything. Just paint, just paint. Gonna be head paint. I was using the, not the, not the brush, but palette. So, what am I going to do? I can't just paint with nothing in mind. I've either got to be painting a, a ball or a, a flower or a vase or something. So I brushed and I brushed and I brushed and I was doing in magenta colors. And I finished. The girl sitting next to me, I could see had a little bit of talent. She looked at my flower look like two magenta roses. She said, oh, those are pretty. That's really pretty. Well, I wasn't supposed to have anything in mind when I painted those roses. They just turned out to be roses. The instructor comes around. 
table by table, and he looks at my painting, and he said, when you've seen one rose, you've seen them all. Oh no, how did he have to, why did he have to describe my painting that way? I took that home. I was a little embarrassed. So when we came back to the next class, more oil painting, and I had a three foot canvas. This time I sat in a chair at the very back of the room where I was against the wall. He was not going to be able to come around behind me, look over my shoulder and critique my artwork. He wasn't going to be able to see it. Well, I did my artwork, went home, had to bring it back the next week. And it was, what was I going to paint? What was I going to paint with oils? I had to have something that I could do. I couldn't paint people, that was for sure, no faces. But I always liked the old world courtyard scenes. And I thought, maybe I could do that. Little shops down one side, big tree, big shade tree, with one of those benches that goes all the way around the tree trunk, great big tree trunk, you know. And there were flower carps. I was able to paint those wrought iron looking flower carts. And I was filling them with flowers. And the base of it was cobblestone. I thought it looked pretty good. So I take it into the class and I'm waiting. Oh gosh, he, I just can't let him see this painting. He came around. He didn't have to go behind me. He stood beside me. He looked at my picture and he said, I had a student about 10 years ago who painted this almost identical picture. I couldn't believe my ears. He remembered one student 10 years ago who did my painting. How does a person remember something like that? Especially when you've had so many students over a period of 10 years and you remember one and the painting they did and it looked just like mine. Well, he didn't criticize my painting. I took it home, it dried and I kept it a while and then one one day in the summer, I was doing a garage sale. Had all my stuff set up in the garage. And I thought, I'm just gonna sell that painting. I'm never gonna use it. So I set it up for sale. I painted my, well, let's see, how would you call it? I wouldn't say it was a contest winner but I sold it for $2. <laughs> I just wonder today if the person that bought that painting still has it. Is it hanging on someone's wall? Wouldn't that be fantastic? If I walked into someone's home and I looked on the wall and there hung my oil painting. So that the kind of painting I did. I didn't do too much of it, but I always wanted to. But what I'm, my point is, go back and read the history of Grandma Moses. It's fascinating to think this simple lady, elderly lady, 77 years old, became famous for her artwork. And if you look on Google, you'll 
go to Grandma Moses' paintings. They give you samples of her artwork. There are a lot of life, a lot of animals, horses, barns, people, but different scenes. And to think, she became famous. That's my story for today. And I hope you like it. And I hope you will look on Google and type in Grandma Moses. And it will give you her life history. And it will show you, oh, about a dozen of her paintings. And to think that her work is in the Smithsonian Institution. To think that you can also buy a painting at Sotheby's. I'd love to know what they sell for today. She lived to be 101 years old. And her first piece of artwork sold when she was 80. I hope some of my YouTube videos will last that long. I hope that someday maybe my great-grandchildren will be able to see pictures and stories from their great-grandmother. They're young now. I haven't seen them in three years. The youngest one is coming up with his third birthday. I've never seen him. And I don't know if I ever will. So, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this story. Get your paintbrushes out. Go buy you couple canvases and get outside and start painting. That's something you can do from now on and something you will get better every time you paint something. You will love artwork. Thanks for watching.